Hello. This lesson is going to talk about trigonometry again, but in this one we're going to take a look at how we use angles with trigonometry. And specifically, we're going to use the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent to help us calculate measures of angles in right triangles. But before we get looking at some examples of that, I just want to remind us of the, trigonom the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. And I had all these ratios here on, on a previous video, but my, my acronym of SOKOTOA, remember, represents sine, is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. A little acronym to help us remember sine. And then we get down to the CA, that stands for cosine, is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And last but not least, we have tangent, which is the opposite side over the adjacent side. So remember your sine, cosine, and tangent. Maybe that acronym can help you remember that. Now the first thing that we have here is just looking at some little equations of sine, cosine, and I have a tangent one as well. Uh, in these, we're looking to figure out what is A, what is B, and what is C. You know, similar to solving an equation, we have to get the variable all by itself. So in this first one, we have the sine of A. Now a lot of people look at that, and when they first start working with trigonometry, they think there's a, there's a time sign in between this. But there's, there's not a time sign. That's not what that's standing for. It's saying the sine of A. So the sine of some angle is 0.9877. So we have to, I like to think of it as undo this sine. And the way you undo the sine is with the inverse of sine. And the inverse of sine looks like that. So we're going to take the inverse of sine of the left side, but then we also have to do that on the right side. Let me sneak it in here like this. So we're going to take the inverse of that. Now, what happens here is the inverse of sine and sine basically wash each other out. So all that's left now is A on the left side. Now, on the right side, this is where our calculator is going to come in handy. That, I can't do it in my head very well, I mean, unless I'm going to memorize all these things, which is kind of pointless in my mind. But we can use our, our calculator to help us figure this out. So what we do is, all we do is type it in. But to get the inverse of sine, we have to push second on our calculator, then push sine, and then type in that, that decimal, so 0 0.9877. I push enter, and voila, we have figured out the measure of angle A. So I just come back here and I write down the 81.00 degrees, if we're going to round that to two decimal places. So 81.00 degrees. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my next one. So in this one, I have to take the inverse cosine to get rid of the cosine in this one, which means I have to take the inverse cosine oops, on the right side as well. I started to, oh, I got rid of everything. There we go. And then this side is the inverse cosine. This side's going to be B. And then on the right side, we got to go back to our calculator, take this out, so I push second cosine, and now I have a fraction, so I just type in four sevenths, and then push enter. Now some calculators don't put that, that parenthesis right after the inverse of cosine, so if your calculator does not do that, make sure that you put the parenthesis in there, so that you get your fraction of four sevenths, and then we can push enter, and we find out that the measure of our angle is 55.15 degrees. Last but not least, I didn't want to leave tangent out, so we have a little tangent equation here. Not any different. If we want to undo tangent, we have to have the inverse of tangent, and then we'll do the same thing on the right side. So I'm going to take the inverse tangent of four thirds. Remember the tangent and the and the inverse tangent wipe each other out. All we're left with is c. We go back to our calculator. To get the inverse of tangent, remember push second first and then tan. The little inverse tangent sews up, and then we just type in our fraction this time of four thirds. And enter, and we find out the measure of angle C is 53.13 degrees. And we've calculated the measure of three angles using the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent. Now let's apply that to a right triangle. So here I have my right triangle. I have no idea how long or what the measure of each angle is other than angle K. And in order for us to use 
the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent, we're going to have to be working with right triangles. We're not going to look at calculating measures in triangles that are not right. Uh, so what we need to do is figure out which angle do we want to uh, calculate the measure of first. And what I'm going to look at is I'm going to start with angle T. Now, to calculate the measure of angle T, we have to figure out which sides we're going to work with. So I start here at angle T, and I look at, I have to ask myself two questions. Which two sides do I know? Well, I look at this and I go, I know the opposite side. And I also know the hypotenuse. Now, some people would look at that right away and think that's the adjacent side. But remember, the adjacent side is the non-hypotenuse side. So if it's the hypotenuse, it is the hypotenuse. Now, I, I'm using uh, opposite and hypotenuse. Then I go back to my trig functions, and I go, well, which one works with opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that is sine. So sine of what always comes after sine, cosine, or tangent is the angle. Well, that was angle T that we were working with. Sine of T is going to be equal to, remember, the opposite side, which is 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 8. So there is my equation that I now need to solve. So I look at it, it's just like the previous page on solving this. If I need to get that t all by itself, I have to undo the sine or take the inverse of sine of both sides of my equation. And now I look at this and go, well, left side is t. Right side, it's just a matter of getting my calculator out. So I pull out that calculator. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Made it a little smaller, didn't I? But that'll work. So I push second, sine, and then type in my fraction of 3 eighths. And we find out the measure of angle T is 22.02 degrees. And we have it. Well, now I just need to figure out what's the measure of angle W. So I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff because I don't need that anymore. And then I go to angle W. And I have to ask myself, well, which two sides do I know the length of? I know the length of the adjacent side this time. And I know the hypotenuse. Think back, which trig function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, that's cosine. So now, I'm going to take the cosine of the angle we were working with, which was W. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. I have my equation. Now I just need to solve it. So I need to take the inverse of cosine to get rid of the cosine on the left side, which means I have to take the inverse of this should be a C. Uh, let's just try to get rid of it so it looks cleaner. There we go cosine, the inverse of cosine, and then I go to my calculator and I start typing numbers on it. Well, second cosine, 3 eighths, oops, 3 eighths, and push enter, and we get 67.98. Come back here. Measure of angle W equals 67.98 degrees. Now, let's just see if that really makes sense. I'm going to think back to the sum of the angles in a triangle. Always has to equal 180 degrees. Well, we started off with the 90 degree angle. And now we think that one of those other angles is 22.02 degrees. And we think the other one is 67.98 degrees. Now, add those three numbers together. And what you find out is it comes out to equal 180 degrees. So really, really good chance then that we have our answer correct. And we do by using the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent to find the measure of those missing angles. And that is going to conclude our lesson on calculating angles using trigonometry.